Hey, let's talk about the gray. I talk about this in the course all the time as and as I'm planning the reintroduction phase part of the course, it's becoming even more and more a theme that we need with IBS, we have to lean into uncertainty um, in order to regulate and heal and feel better. And I kind of call that uncertainty the gray because when we get diagnosed, we immediately want to know exactly what we can and what we can't eat. And we want rules because we think if we have these rules, then we'll feel better because we can just follow the rules and then we'll, we'll feel better. But the thing is, everybody's IBS is a different kind of, I don't want to call it an animal. I think that's a bad word for it. Um, a different kind of challenge, right? So for what might affect some people is not going to affect other people. So it's this idea that when we're going through the elimination phase, we kind of have to live in the gray when you're even learning about things like how to read labels. Like reading labels is a whole topic. Hey Brett, hey Dylan, because it's like, like you think something is low FODMAP or you think something is gluten free, but then they put all these additives in there that you didn't even know were in there. And it's like, well, I thought I would be fine with this gluten free bread, but lo and behold, there's all these like extra tricky things in there that actually make it not low FODMAP. And it's like, oh my gosh, why am I having a flare up? Why am I having a flare up? I thought I was eating by the rules. Well, that's because a lot of the rules are in the gray and a lot of times we don't even realize we're in the gray. So it's this idea that on the elimination side of things, you're in the gray because you know, things like um, coconut. Coconut is considered low FODMAP, but if you grind it up and you turn it into coconut flour, now it's high FODMAP, right? So there's all these like very interesting intricacies of the elimination phase, but then you get into the, it, so like first you like become a warrior in the introduction, right? And you're like, you eliminate all these foods and you start to feel better and you kind of learn what it means to live low FODMAP. I mean like really low FODMAP, but you can't live there for a number of reasons. I'm not going to go into them. You can't live low FODMAP forever, which is why we have this beautiful reintroduction phase, which people see as like, oh my freaking word. Hey, Bobby. Oh, you guys should follow Bobby. She's a warrior. She's, and so it's like, oh my gosh, like I have to reintroduce the foods that I just eliminated for six weeks and now I feel fucking fantastic and you want me to reintroduce them, Jasmine? Like, are you freaking crazy? But here's the thing. When you do that, and when you take it as a worthy opponent and a challenge and something to overcome, at the end of, you know, that 8 to 12 weeks, if you, and uh, that's a quick time, 8 to 12 weeks, if you do it quickly, then um, at the end, you have much more variety in your diet. It's a lot easier to go out and eat things. It's a lot easier to know what your, your, what your rules are. So at the end of the reintroduction phase, you've kind of lived through this gray of like, can I eat that? Can I not eat that? Oh, I can have this, but only in so much amount, right? Because portions are huge. Huge portions are like the whole entire thing. Thanks, Bobby. Portions are like, like quantity matters with IBS. People think it's just quality of food, and I just have to eat great food and what? No, quantity matters. <laughs> I cannot tell you enough. Quantity matters. So if you're thinking about the end of the reintroduction phase, you end up with your very own black and white. And that's the beauty behind it. But in order to get to the black and the white and to sift through the fog, you have to live in there for a little bit. It's a little bit scary, right? But the idea is if you're with a community, right? If you're with a community that's helping you shine a light, if you remember that at, at the core of our essence, this is a whole other topic, we are light. Like honestly, at our very, 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 you break it down really, really far, we are light. And so if you think about those things and you just push through and you stay in gratitude and you trust and you have certainty that through that gray, you're gonna get to the black and white, you will get there. Oh, look at that hair. Squirrel. <laughs> so I just want to bring that to you because it's something so true in your IBS journey and learning to regulate your IBS, but it's also true in life. Just like most of the lessons that we learn with IBS, it's not usually just about our IBS. And there's a lot of times there's gray areas. Oh my gosh, in relationships, am I the only one that's had like been in a relationship where you're like, I have no idea where the boundary and I don't know where I stand. Am I the only one? I, sh I sure don't think so. Um, in our finances, you know, it's like always this flex flow kind of a thing rather than a rigid system all the time. So I just bring that to you this morning, hoping that if you are in that place, if you're in the gray 
area and you're confused, that's beautiful because you're on the edge of a breakthrough. Confusion is a magical thing and um, you're so not the only one. Talk to you guys soon. Have a great, great, great day.